So in this quick tip, I wanna go through a technique that I use to take grooves from percussion loops and have them influence synths, vocals, and just about anything you can think of. By using Ableton's Envelope Follower, you can copy in real time the groove and rhythm of a percussion loop and have it cut up, pulse, and automate another sound to get that groove into your track in a new, fresh way. Okay, so let's get started. And I've got a very simple beat going on here, just some drums and a nice little kind of simple bass line. As you can see, nothing really complex going on there, just basically a whole load of drum one shots, a top loop in there just to kind of fill it out a little bit, and then a very simple bass line that's crafted in Operator. And it's kind of a very simple basis for what we're about to do here. I want to make things a little bit more interesting and add another layer over the top of it. Now I have this pad sound that I've got from Anna, and it's just one of the default patches within there, the JX8 saw pad. And I've just done a very simple kind of pad-like sound, just a held chord. It's a really nice sound, but I want to give it a little bit more groove and make it fit with the rest of the track. And that's where this technique comes in. Now, the first thing I need for this trick is a percussion loop. I'm going to have a look in my samples within here. And in fact, I've got this sample pack here, this tech funk tech house pack here, and we've got a folder full of percussion loops. It's a really nice kind of groove to that one. So I'm going to load that into an audio channel on here. That percussion loop goes really well with the groove that I've already got going on here, but it's not the sound that I'm after. It's actually the notes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a really cool utility within Ableton in the audio effects category that came with Ableton 11 called Envelope Follower. So I'm going to drag and drop this onto the percussion loop and then I'm going to solo the percussion loop and let's see what this Envelope Follower is actually doing. You can see every time that there's a hit within there, it's actually sensing that and it's actually uh, building an envelope based on that. Now what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to increase the gain just so we've got a bit more of an envelope so it's doing more. There we go. We can see that kind of envelope is just a bit larger than it was before. And that's going to help us when it comes to mapping it to something else, which is what we're going to do next. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to use that envelope and I'm going to influence the pad with it. So we get that kind of same rhythm from that percussion, but it goes onto the pad and it gives that pad a bit more, well, it gives it the groove. So let's switch over to the pad. What I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put an auto filter on this. And the whole idea of this is I want to kind of open and close that auto filter when that kind of percussion happens. So doing something a bit similar to this. And that's what envelope follower is going to do. So I'm going to switch over to the percussion channel and I'm going to click the map button here. Now this allows us to map it to anything within Ableton. So I'm going to jump over to the pad channel here and I'm going to map it to the frequency. So I just click on this and it's now mapped to that. If we now play this back, you can hear it's doing the same thing as the percussion. If we have the percussion playing at the same time, Now it's not sounding perfect, but we can tweak the envelope follow to get the result that we're after. So I'm going to unsolo that percussion. I'm going to go back to the percussion. And I'm going to tweak this here. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to increase the fall. So basically the fall you can think of as kind of a release or decay that you'd usually have on a synth. We also have the rise here. You can think of that as the attack. That's working really nice. Let's hear it with everything else. 
And in fact, let's turn the percussion off first because we don't even need to have the percussion on there. It needs to be there, obviously, so it gets the envelope, but it doesn't need to be turned on. So as you can see, it's a really easy way to kind of get a kind of groove out of a percussion loop that you might not use because of the sound, but that you like the kind of groove of that percussion loop. So you can then use it to influence other things. And we can also kind of play around with this a bit as well. You can see here that we have a 0% and a 100%. So when the envelope is at the bottom, that's the minimum value. And when the envelope is at the top, that's the maximum value. And what we can do here is we can switch these two around. So when the envelope's at the bottom, we we can set the auto filter to 100% and when it when the envelope reaches the top then we can set it to 0% so effectively kind of reversing it almost so i'm going to put 100% in here and i'm going to put zero in here so basically when the percussion hits that's when the auto filter will be down and when it kind of releases or it doesn't hit or it's just silent that's when it goes back up to 100% and you get a different kind of effect <laughs> We might want to just adjust the fall and a few other things within here. And if I turn on the percussion layer, you can kind of hear what it's actually doing. So it's kind of almost filling the spaces in where the percussion isn't hitting. Which is kind of interesting, really, because what you could have is you could have a percussion instrument which is playing a rhythm and you want to kind of fill the gaps where that rhythm isn't being played. So you could do it in that method. You could use the envelope follower following that percussion element you're doing. And every time you kind of stop making any noise with that percussion, then the other thing will make the noise, if you get what I mean. I'm going to switch it back around because I think I liked it the other way better. And that's just one use. You can actually then map it to a whole load of different things. For example, let's just delete this auto filter for the moment. And let's go into Anna. And what I can do is I could actually, I'll open up this little arrow here and we'll use one of the parameters in here maybe to automate. We can actually automate any parameter within here. So say for example, we have this cutoff within the synth. We could then go ahead and automate that cutoff. What I'll do is I'll click configure here. And when I touch this, we'll then have this value here. Let me close that synth for a second. And what I can do is I do exactly the same as I did before. Go over to the percussion element here, click map, then go back to the pad sound and then map it to this. Really, really simple technique, but there's just so many ways you can use it. And I want to show you it with a different sound. So we got a pad there. I'm going to try it with this vocal sample here. So I've got this vocal sample. Music. Music. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fill it with a whole load of reverb here. Music. And what we can do is we can create that kind of stutter vocal effect by doing the same thing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a utility on here because the utility we can use to then automate the gain of the track. So again, I'll go back to the percussion channel here. I'll delete that mapping that we had before and then click map again. And then I'll map it to this gain within here. Now, this is where you need to be very careful. This gain dial here goes all the way from minus infinity up to really, really, really loud. And what we want it to do is we want it to reach the halfway mark. We want it to be zero dB. So though basically no impact on it at all. If it went over that, then obviously we're just increasing the volume and we don't want that. This is where adjusting these values here come into effect. So the maximum we want it to be is 50%, which would affect be midway on this utility. As you can hear there, we're getting that kind of stutter effect. In, in fact, I'm going to increase that reverb a little bit more just so we have a bit more kind of 
stuff going on there so we can play around with it. In fact, I'm going to duplicate that reverb across so it happens after the gating as well. Now, what if you want to have multiple things being affected by one percussion loop within the track? You probably think you need to go back into that percussion element here and add another envelope follower. Well, actually, you don't need to because there's a little button here which actually opens up and allows you to map multiple things. So we already have it mapped to that vocal sample. I'm going to map it back to this pad sound. And in fact, let's bring that auto filter back again. And I'm going to click map within here and then map it to that pad auto filter. And you can see within here, you actually have different values for each individual mapping. So for example, the gain goes up to 50% within here, but the frequency, the auto filter frequency on the pad, you can change that as well. So maybe I don't want that all the way up. I want it to up to a maximum of 70%, for example. And then what we can do is then close out of here and we can start affecting these. And what it will do is it will then affect the uh, cutting up and that kind of envelope on both the pad and the vocal sound at once. And if you want even more fun, what we can now do, because everything is all set up here, we can simply go into our samples again and just change the percussion loop to something else. As you can see, there's just so many different options and so many different ways you can use this to influence the groove within your track. Taking those percussion loops that you maybe wouldn't use because they're not the right sound, but you like that kind of groove that they've got and applying that groove to other things within your track.